face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up, guys? And of course, welcome back to an episode of Who Was Really Better? And this is actually no normal episode, as you guys can see on the screen already. It's a very, very unique matchup, and I have a very, very unique person joining me, and a person that I've been a long time fan of, and it's just such an honor to having him on here. So I'll just let him introduce himself. Hello everybody, it's Fufu here. Skyrander invited me onto his channel to do this video and I'm very happy to oblige. Today we're going to be looking at who is better between Nidoking and Nidoqueen. It's the battle of the sexes, so I hope that you're excited for this one and I hope that I'm not going to offend anyone going through this. So we're going to see if the genders are equal in the Pokemon world. It's actually very true. There actually are two separate Pokemon, but they share the well, the classification of the same type of Pokemon. This is a very, very weird situation coming from, of course, Generation 1. And we're, of course, going to go over their stats, abilities, and, of course, weaknesses and resistances that they have, of course, in common. So, without further ado, let's, of course, go over them one by one. So, first off, let's look at the typing. They both share this typing, which is Poison Ground, so we're not going to be able to differentiate them much at this stage. But just to comment on the typing, I think it's very good typing. They are weak to Psychic Ice and unfortunately water as well. Water is quite a common typing that you'll see quite a lot, but they gain a lot of great resistances. So they're immune to electric types. Great, it means that your opponent can't Volt Switch around as easily. They're also quad resistant to poison types, which is useful. You don't see too much poison as an attacking type though. But what's really great is they resist fighting types, which is very common, and a lot of choice lock Pokemon uh, use fighting type moves so you can threaten them out. And it also resists bug type moves. So again, you're stopping Volt Switches, but also U-Turners won't be as effective because you can resist that U-Turn. And also Fairy types. These are really great Poison types for taking on Fairies. You can resist those moves and hit back really hard. So that's great. And they also resist Rock type as well, just to note that, because you will resist the Stealth Rock. And that means that you can switch in loads of times. So... I think this is great typing. You do have some weaknesses, but the resistances are really, really useful. That is very true. There are a lot of things that this type of combination really, really does well. As stated here, it does resist the likes of Pining Rock combination, which only makes, of course, weakness to the likes of Rock, which could be a very common thing to be able to, of course, wall out. Luckily, though, due to, of course, resistant berries that are like sugar berries and stuff like that, they can actually move their self rather well around that, and it actually makes them both superb Pokemon to use for the likes of League Form, where you can be extremely specific, and they do well due to that alone. And as stated here, there are resistant to the likes of Stealth Rocks and, of course, U-Turners, which means that Pirates doesn't necessarily hurt them all that much, of course, they are immune to electric and volt switching in general. So then, of course, worth mentioning is because, because of the typing combination, Ground Poison, it means that, of course, there are stationary typing that can get rid of, of course, the Stealth Rocks, or, I mean, this Toxic Spike, but also, of course, Resisted Lies, of course, from the Stealth Rocks. So this type of combination was the strongest one in game, and as stated, even though there are a few weaknesses here, of course, the Ground Ice, Psychic Water, which are fairly common, these Pokemon can be extremely specific and are very, very unique due to that reason alone. So let's move on to look at the stats and abilities. I think it's important to look at abilities first because really you can't differentiate between the two again on this one. They have the same abilities, but it does kind of color looking at the stats in terms of their abilities because there's a very important one that you will see used most often. So there's poison point, which means if the opponent uses a contact move, there's a chance that they might get poisoned. It's all right for defensive Pokemon, but actually these two definitely have better abilities to look at. There's also rivalry, which which is very situational and you don't get as much of a boost as the final ability, which is Sheer Force. This is a great ability for these two. They have a lot of moves which can benefit from the Sheer Force boost. It means that they lose its secondary effect, but it does get a 30% boost in power, which is great. So both of these Pokemon are likely going to be using that Sheer Force ability. And so I thought it was important to say that because then when we go to look at stats, you have to think, Though the stats may not look super high, these two will hit very hard because of the sheer force ability. So you need to think of the offensive stats as being boosted for both of them. So now let's look at stats, and this is where these things will be a little bit different. We start to see the two Pokemon having different roles. So Nidoking stats are very much more for an offensive Pokemon, where Nidoqueen stats are much more for a bulky Pokemon. 
Let's break that down a little bit. So Nidoking has base 102 attack and base 85 special attack. With the sheer force ability, these are both very good stats. He will be hitting hard on both sides. So that's really cool to see. And compared to Nidoking's Queen stats, it's got 92 attack and 75 special attack. On the face of it, these are very high, but again, with the sheer force ability, it does hit surprisingly hard. So it's not too much of a difference in power, but it is noticeable Nidoking will be slightly better at breaking walls, for example. And then also Nidoking has the highest speed, which is also better for an offensive Pokemon. It means that it will be able to speed tie or outspeed more Pokemon. There are quite a lot of Pokemon around the 85 speed tier, and it will outspeed those at base 80 as well. So that's really nice. Um, Nidoking's speed tier at 76 is a bit weird. You don't see that many Pokemon with that and it is missing out on that 80 speed tier. However, 76 is still a decent speed for a bulky Pokemon. You'll be able to speed creep as much as you want and it's definitely a stat you can play around with. So though it's not the best for an offensive Pokemon, for a bulky Pokemon, which it is, that's actually a very decent stat too. But now let's look at the bulk and Nidoqueen definitely wins out here. It has nine base points higher in its HP at base 90 compared to Nidoking's King's 81. And then it gets 10 points more in both of its defenses at 87 and 85 compared to Nidoking's King's 77 and 75 defenses. So that makes Nidoking Queen a lot bulkier because all of those three stats go together for its bulk and it is a lot bulkier than Nidoking. King. It is notice noticeable. Nidoking King won't be able to switch in as easily on attacked as Nidoking. Queen. So now you can see that they do have two separate roles. Nidoking Queen doesn't hit as hard as Nidoking, King, but because of the sheer force ability, it still does hit hard and so is generally a bulky attacker whereas Nidoking normally invests in its speed and attack stats, being a wall breaker that can run physical, special, or mixed sets. They do perform different roles, so it's quite hard to say which is better because we're comparing things that are quite different now, but I feel that Nidoqueen has a bit more versatility. You can play around with how much bulk you want, or how much offense you want, or how much speed you want. Nidoking also is very good at that and can hit really hard, but you can't play around with its bulk as much and it won't be able to fulfill that role as well as Nidoqueen. And this is a running theme with both of these Pokemon. It's very clear as of course Fufu here is saying, Nidoking just hits harder. He's a lot harder actually depending on what you want to invest with. Of course with super effective hits, it's very clear that Nidoking might very well KO things while Nidoking might miss out on the KO. But then again, if King misses out on the KO, also, it's very more likely that Queen would survive the Everlasting hit, of course, coming. Now, the speed tier, as noted here, it is a weird speed tier, but both are considered wall breakers, and for that reason, they are actually faster than your average bulky Pokemon. There are very few that outspeeds them, they can actually threaten them. The first, of course, off my head, that definitely are Pokemon that could outspeed them in their lives, of course. Um, Milotic, and of course, Cresselia, who just speeds high, actually, with Nido King. And then we have, of course, Heatran. So those are the Pokemon that, in general, just come to my head that are uh, bulkier Pokemon that tend to be faster than these two. So that's the only real reason they are threatened. Other than that, they actually have a very strong speed to and able to actually utilize themselves really well. Nidoqueen, of course, standing out because it actually can actually suit a more bulky role for more teams. When King could be definitely bulkier, but at the same time, you're missing out on a lot of damage output. Then, of course, Nido King does pack. So, between these two, it's very clear, as stated and as Fufu said, Nido King hits stronger, Nido Queen lasts longer. Now, let's consider their move pools. Their move pools are actually very similar. There's not much to differentiate them here either. They've got some great stab attacks for the ground types. You've got Earth Power and Earthquake. Unfortunately, Earthquake doesn't get the Sheer Force boost, but it's already quite a high base power attack. And then you've got the Poison moves in Poison Jab and Sludge Wave, so great stabs. And that's backed up by some really great coverage. They get all three of the elemental punches and they get moves like Flamethrower, Ice Beam, Thunderbolt on the special side too, which are really great coverage moves there. They both also get access to Super Power, which is a very nice physical move to back up their physical coverage. But in terms of physical moves, 
Nidoking does get a couple extra which are really important to note. So it does get Megahorn which can be useful for taking on bulky psychic types that Nidoqueen would otherwise struggle with and it also gets Head Smash which can be useful situationally or if you're playing League format again it could be something to catch your opponent off guard. But the main one to think about is Sucker Punch. Nidoqueen does not get Sucker Punch whereas Nidoking does. This allows Nidoking to have priority and to be able to threaten Pokemon that are fast than it. This is really great. So you can break walls, but not only that, you can threaten your counters. So something that wants to try to revenge you will probably be quite frail and you will be able to sucker punch that. In terms of things that Nidoqueen gets over Nidoqueen, there's not really much at all that's useful. So it gets charm and it gets chip away, but you won't really be seeing these used at all. So in terms of the move pool, Nidoqueen definitely has the edge with some very useful attacks that it has that Nidoqueen does not get. It's worth noting that both Nidoking and Nidoqueen get access to Stealth Rock and Toxic Spikes as hazard options. Very useful hazard options and both of them can make use of it. Nidoking can be an offensive Stealth Rocker and Nidoqueen can actually just be a bulky hazard stacker. It can carry both on, on that set and it's generally maybe a bit more reliable than Nidoking as well for setting up hazards. So though Nidoqueen's move pool may not be as extensive as, as Nidoking's, it may well be able to use those hazards hazards a little bit better than Nidoking can. And other than that, there aren't really that much is happening. There are niche Pokemon in some areas because it can be extremely, extremely specific when it comes to removal and really are doing both of these performances really well. Uh, one thing Nidoking does get that is very, very worth mentioning because as of course stated, Nidoking does get of course one type of priority in Sucker Punch, but Nidoking does get of course Pursuit. While Pursuit is not necessarily the most useful move, it does at least get it and also get Crunch, but of course could be utilized by the likes of course Shefos. Those are of course the only few moves that are actually standing out. Offensively, yet again, Nidoking really, really shines here because it gets so many moves. Now it's C moves, of course, implicated. Head Smash it now, of course, is a 200 base power move. And that's extremely dangerous because you, of course, lose this out on your recall. So it's very, very noteworthy here that Nidoking is the absolute beast here overall. And as, of course, Fufu is saying, Stacker is something that, of course, Queen can just really well, of course, with Stealth Rocks and Toxic Spikes in mind. Very, very powerful, such as that. But it's very clear that Nidoking is easily, due to his extreme move alone, slightly better here than Queen, even though they do perform different laurels. So now we come down to decision time as to which Pokemon we think is better. And as I've said, they perform different roles, so this is quite a hard task to do because they don't actually do the same thing. In terms of Smogon, currently Nidoking has got more usage than Nidoqueen, but this does change and it depends on the meta that they're playing in. Nidoking being a great wall breaker is presumably why it's got more usage than Nidoqueen. I feel in draft format that Nidoqueen is actually better because it is just a bit more versatile with what you can do with it. They both have the great coverage you can bring each week for draft, but Nidoqueen can be EV to live certain things, it can be EV to take certain things out, which is very useful. But that's not to say that Nidoking's extra coverage is not very useful there too. Deciding which one is better is a definitely a subjective choice and it depends on your playstyle. For me, I think I prefer Nidoqueen. I like that it can take those hits and then hit back for a KO. I think that's really cool. And I also like the fact that it's probably going to be more reliable in terms of getting up your hazards. And I really, really like hazards. I think that they're so crucial in so many battles. So I would choose Nidoqueen over Nidoking. But then other people who have a more offensive playstyle, if they can get that Nidoking in safely on the thing that it needs to be in on, it's going to wreak havoc. So this one is a really close one. They do perform different roles but it depends on your playstyle in the end. And for me, Nidoqueen definitely fits me better. So it's girl power this time. And I 100% do agree here with Fufu, and it's very easy actually to make this call. When it comes to smoke and tears in general, it's very clear why Nidoqueen is supposed to be better. And while it is, of course, more used, it does have a pretty strong speed here. It does easily, of course, fit a team. While they both are doing just that, it's very clear when it comes to the league format that here is the thing starts to matter in quite a lot because they are very, very similar in the damage output, but are very, very different when it comes to defensive capabilities. 
And with that in mind, and of course, I stated previously, due to the speed tier alone, in what leagues you can be extremely specific, which means that Needle Queen actually optimized for very, very speedy, bulkier Pokemon. And when it comes down to what they're doing in general, it's very, very easy to say that Needle Queen, due to that alone, is bulkier, more versatile, and of course, has the relevant speed tier enough to deal with the massive threats. Nidoking King can do the same most certainly, but most of the time it's forced to run the lights of course life or be more offensively involved, which of course can be a dangerous time, since of course you're pressured now to go against other offensive Pokemon, and since you're most likely slower, you're gonna lose that matchup while Nido Queen might very well survive. So for that very reason alone, it's very, very easy for me to say that Nido Queen should be of course better. So with of course all of this said, I really, really want to give him a big, big thank you, and of course, a big shout out to Fufu. His link to his channel is going to be linked down below, but very, very clear that you guys really are following him. He's an excellent pocket tuber and just a blast to actually be dealing with. He's a very, very nice person. It was such a blast having him on here. I really can't thank him enough. So, with that said, guys, what do you guys think? This is a very, very actually cool matchup in general and it wasn't actually necessarily that easy as i stated there it came down to the league viability because the viability and of course in spoken tiers aren't differentiating these two pokemon that much and the league form is where of course queen stood out and we really really had to go with the little edge it had and it was definitely the only deciding factor in this matchup so with that said of course guys thank you of course so much for watching and join us next episode where we are going to of course look upon these guys.